Hello and welcome to today's video. In today's video, we're gonna learn 80% of QuickBooks in only 10 minutes. Hello and welcome to today's video. If you're ever trying to learn something, one of the most important things to do is understand the basics. And with QuickBooks, it couldn't be any more straightforward. So what we're gonna look at now is concentrate on say the first 80% of what QuickBooks is all about, give you a nice basis of how to do things on QuickBooks, and that's gonna give you the knowledge to understand how to think about the rest of the 20%. Now, there's a nice little metaphor. There's this theory called Pareto Principle, which basically says that to achieve 80% of a desired skill or new, new something you're trying to learn, then you only need to put 20% of the required skill set in there to achieve that. Now, if that's the case, then what we want to do is we want to understand that first 80%. We want to get to grips with the basics of QuickBooks and understand exactly how QuickBooks works so that when it comes to the rest of QuickBooks and the more complicated issues, we know at least the base knowledge. So that means you can use my videos or you can use other outlets out there to be able to do some more research and understand the more complicated areas. But if you can just understand the basics first, you're gonna know what to look for, what to search for, and you're gonna be able to make sure you get the right results out of it. So today I've got 10 minutes to show you exactly the most basic principles in QuickBooks. And those basic principles are gonna be quite straightforward. We're gonna look at money in, money out, the bank, and then some reporting. So we're gonna keep it nice and straightforward. In each one of the sections I'm looking at though, I've already done a big long-winded video about each one. So if you do want to see anything in a little bit more detail, do jump over to some of those videos, have a look and see if you can get some more information about them if you need to. So let's use these 10 minutes wisely and try and learn 80% of QuickBooks in 10 minutes time. All right then, so let's have a look at QuickBooks itself. Brilliant, so first you log into QuickBooks. That's gonna be your first bit of skill set. Make sure you actually get yourself logged in in the first place. Once you've got yourself logged in though, we're gonna come straight on money in. Now money in within QuickBooks is vitally important. It's all about you trying to get money into your business. So it's about you doing sales invoices or sales receipts. Now, most businesses are split between the middle. They're either going to be a business where you send an invoice out and then at some point you receive that money back in again, normally at a later date. Or you could be a company that rely on actually selling things and then recording that transaction later. That could be through PayPal, through boot sales, that could be Facebook Marketplace, that could be owning a shop, however you're going to do it. So there's two ways in which you want to understand how to record income into the business. The first one, the easier one if you like, is sending a sales invoice. So I'm gonna use the new button in the top left-hand corner. And through that new button, I'm gonna go down to customers and invoice. From here, I'm gonna pick a customer. I'm gonna ensure I've got the right date and I'm gonna tell them when it's due. The next thing I'm gonna be interested in is what it is I've sold. This top bit is all about making sure you're sending it to the right person, so the right email address and everything else. Now all I wanna do is choose what product. Now when you drop down this, you'll have many an option. To create a new one up here, you press add new and you can create any new products and service you want to sell. But if I just wanna choose one of the ones that are here, I would choose any one that's there. So let's say I'm selling, selling some headphones. I would say how many of those headphones I've sold and it's then gonna work out for me all my other information and make sure I've got a VAT associated with it as well. That's sending an invoice, really straightforward there. I can then just send and set, save and send, and that invoice will then get sent out. Now, as I said, the other part is gonna be if you are receiving or you've already sold something and you wanna record that transaction. Well, from my new button, I can go in and I can use what's called a sales receipt. So new customer's sales receipt. From there, I'm gonna be showing exactly the same screen we've just seen for an invoice, the difference is this area just here. And what this area is all about is it's gonna be talking about or looking at what it is that I'm actually selling. So I wanna concentrate on this area here to make sure I know exactly what it is I'm selling and where the money's gonna to go to. Then just like before, I choose a product and service. This time I'm gonna go for something like sales. And this time I've gotta put a description in there. So maybe I'm gonna say, so maybe I've sold some CDs. I would then put how many of them I've sold if I need to show that as a quantity and then I can say how much each sale was. Then again, my VAT and everything can be worked out. If I need to, I've got the option up here to go from exclusive to inclusive. And what that means is it's now gonna work back the VAT. I've sold 105 pound and my VAT is gonna be calculated on that for me. So press save. Now at this point, I wouldn't wanna just save and send it because I'm not really sending it to anyone. I also need to make sure I've assigned this to a customer. So I could make this really generic and I could make a brand new customer here 
and say cash sales. I'm gonna create that brand new customer and I'm gonna make sure it's going to cash on hand. I've sold 105 pounds, my CDs are there. And instead of sending say, send and save, because there's nowhere to send it to, I'm just gonna do save and close. It'll close that screen down, pay me back into there. That was money in, really straightforward, two ways of doing that. And you'll also see when we reach our bank account that that sales receipt option you can make the bank account do that bit for you. Okay, let's move on to money out. So from a money out point of view, I'm gonna stay in this suppliers section here. And from here, first thing I need to understand is the difference between an expense and a bill. A bill is something you're gonna receive an invoice from a supplier. And when you receive that invoice, you're gonna pay for it at a later date. So you wanna record it now so that you can keep it in flow, your cash flow and everything like that. But when you do go to pay it, you wanna instead put that money that you've paid against that particular supplier invoice that's outstanding. An expense on the other hand is an item where you're already paid for it. So in that case, if you've gone down to the post office, you've paid for those stamps, you'd record it as an expense. So it doesn't matter if you choose a bill or an expense, but let's go for an expense so we can see how that works. You're gonna see a very similar screen, difference between a bill and expense. The only difference between a bill and expense is this payment account up here. This, if I drop it down, is basically where it's paid from. If you're creating a bill, you won't have that option because you haven't paid for it yet. Then it's all about category. Now basically category is where it's going to fit or what sort of expense it is you've incurred. When you drop the box down, you'll see there's loads of different transactions here. I can have anything from utilities and gas, corporation tax, travel expense, taxes, sundry expenses, purchases, PayPal charges, office admin, motor running costs. There's loads of different transactions or categories you can choose from. If you need to create, create your own, just start typing it in. So maybe I want a new category for post and stationary. As soon as I start putting that in, I then get the opportunity to add that directly there. And then you can follow the on-screen instructions on how to create that. For now though, what I'm interested in is using the categories I've got. Don't be afraid that if it's not quite right, that you just put it into something that feels about right. With computer equipment and additions on cost. That's exactly what I've gone and bought. I've bought myself a new laptop from Apple. I could even say what laptop it was, MacBook Pro, and then I can put it from here. Also remember down the bottom, you have that option to add an attachment. So if you've got a copy of that receipt, take a copy of it, stick it into the attachment and attach it directly to that computer, that, that transaction. That means if you ever need to come back to it, you're gonna make it nice and easy, save and close. So, so far we've put money in and we put money out. So we've looked at receiving money in and receiving money out. By far the most convenient part about QuickBooks though is your bank account. So let's have a look at how to interact with your bank. So now it's time to look at the bank account. By far the best place where you're gonna find the most amount of savings and you're gonna be able to figure out exactly how best to use QuickBooks. Now, what we're gonna do here is first of all, look at how to add an account. So top right hand corner, the option to add account. And from here, it's gonna pick some of the most famous bank accounts out there, but you can type in any type. So I could go and put nationwide in. I can go and put nationwide in. I get 1,593 results regarding the word NAT. Doesn't matter what bank you choose though, it's gonna walk you through exactly how to do it. And it'll take you off and it will make sure your connection are all connected. Once you have connected though, Really straightforward. You're gonna have all these options along the top. So basically every time you add a bank account in, you're gonna get what's called a bank card. And the most important thing to learn about the banking set situation is that this bank card here is really important to understand. So every time you're in a bank card, it's gonna start bringing information in for you. Like for example here, this bank account has five transactions that's been brought in. These five transactions are not in QuickBooks yet, and we only put them into QuickBooks when we process them. And when we process them, we're either gonna match them against a transaction that's already in QuickBooks, or we're gonna add a brand new transaction. Now, when we add a transaction, we're gonna find a transaction, let's say this information here, and this is 285 pound received in my bank account. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna treat that as a brand new sales. I'm gonna go add here, and just to show you how I did that, I clicked into the transaction itself and it opens it up for me. From here, I'm gonna look at the add button. I'm gonna make sure then that I'm happy that it's a sales receipt, and I'm gonna put it against 20% tax in my case when I'm looking at VAT. Memo, I might wanna explain what it is I've sold. So here I could say I've sold a brand new Sony PlayStation, and I can press add. That way, I'm adding the transactions they come in, and I'm making sure that they're added directly there. The other thing you might find though, is if I click on this transaction here, you'll notice it's got one green box around it. That's because QuickBooks has found this transaction for me. Therefore, it's given me the option to match the transaction 
and it's going to match against a transaction I've already put within QuickBooks. If I'm happy with that, I press match and I'm good to go. When you have transactions that you have quite a few of, then QuickBooks is going to help you to understand what to do with it. On the first one, it's gonna, when you open up, it's gonna ask you what category it's gonna be. Now, uncategorized expense is never gonna be the category we use, but in this one, it's a Vodafone transaction, so let's put it against telephone, and I'm gonna put 20% VAT on mine. Remember, you may not be that registered, so you may not need to worry about that. I'm gonna press add. Watch what happens though, because it says here that from now on in, we'll set Vodafone to telephone, so when I press add, the next transaction in line has gone green, and it's telling me it understands what to do with it now. We've taught it that when it sees a Vodafone phone transaction let's add the transaction as a Vodafone we take it one step forward if you add another one again it's going to come up and suggest a rule personally I think these rules are really really good and what you're going to do now is you're going to tell QuickBooks that every time it sees Vodafone to apply the same logic to put it against telephone put it against the right VAT you can even go one step forward and auto add that means that as soon as it hits the bank account QuickBooks is then going to deal with that transaction and it's going to put it directly into QuickBooks for you. So that's when you press auto add. Once you've created that rule, every time it sees Vodafone, those transactions are going to go straight into QuickBooks for you. Final one is this transaction here. It's a really complicated one here. Basically, there's some uh, money that's been paid out, HMRC VAT. So what I want to do is I want to be careful about it because what QuickBooks has done is it's seen the word HMRC, it's seen the word grants, and now people are wrongly assuming that that must be correct. When you press that add button down there, you're effectively saying you're happy that QuickBooks has put the right date, the right description, which is gonna pick from the bank for you, and also that you've got the right category and the right VAT if you want that registered. And that's really important to understand. Just because QuickBooks has said grants there, doesn't mean that's correct. In this case, I actually need to put it to VAT suspense because it's me paying my VAT bill and I want to put that to no VAT. And I've got to be careful because the memo is telling me everything here, bank detail, HMRC VAT, HMRC VAT. So I know it was a VAT suspense, but QuickBooks was trying to help you and was assuming it was grants. And you've got to make sure you understand the difference or the fact that you have to choose that category as soon as you press play, click play. So press add and that transaction's in. What you're looking for are these nice green ticks here, especially when you've got something like this here, where I've got a bank balance of £693.58, in QuickBooks £693.58 and a nice big green tick. That's what you're looking for. That means all the transactions have been added into QuickBooks and that means we've got the same amount in QuickBooks as we do in our bank account. So that's our, our gold standard at that point. These other transactions here, each one of them I'd wanna look at a little bit more detail because they don't quite, these bank accounts don't quite match up. So I'd, I'd want to check them and find out what to do with them. Final bit then, reports. Once you've spent all that time putting all that information in, you want to see how your business is doing. My favorite report is, once you go into the report section, you have the option at the top here to favorites. And basically all that it means is there's a star being associated against them. And as soon as you put a star against the reports below, they appear in your favorites. And if you take the star out, they disappear from your favorites. I've added profit and loss by month, and you can find that under your business overview, profit and loss by month. I love this report, because this report's gonna tell me if I extend the date range using the top left-hand corner, so let's say the last 365 days and run report, it's gonna be, give me a nice indication of where my income and expenses and everything else has been going. And it's a really quick way to, for me to find maybe mistakes I've made. So I'm looking at these transactions here, and I'm missing a telephone expense for December 19 because I've got one in, in November, I've got one in January, so why have I not got one in December? And if I need to look at the figures in any more detail, I click on one of the numbers, it takes me down into the detail. Oh, and there we have two transactions in there. Maybe that Vodafone really does relate to my December bill, and it should really be in the December column. Final report to look at, keep an eye on this business snapshot. Clicking on business snapshot gives you a real good indication of how your business is doing. You'll see it starts giving me nice little detailed graphs of what my previous year income comparisons are, how my expenses are split, who owes me, who I owe. It gives me lots of information there so that I can quickly understand how my business is doing. And that's it. 10 minutes to show you 80% of how QuickBooks Online can be used. Now, obviously that's not giving you the whole of QuickBooks, but that should give you enough basis knowledge for you to start having a go, start adding transactions in. The more transactions you add into QuickBooks, the more data you put in there, the more you're gonna understand how the impacts are going to be. And that's what this is all about, giving you those tools, giving you that information to be able to go and put that information into QuickBooks, put that data in there, start putting transactions in there, and you're gonna understand 
what information you need to get out of it, and what problems you're getting along the way. When you do know those problems, make sure to look at my videos, subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna go through as much detail as I can, all those more complicated bits, so that we can give advice and give you the information you need to be able to complete your QuickBooks to the best of your ability. If you are struggling with it all though, or you do need a QuickBooks license and you want a nice cheap QuickBooks license, don't forget to look at my friends over at boffix.com. I'll put a link on, underneath below. But basically, they can give you a nice cheap license so that you can pay less than you would be paying QuickBooks themselves. And also, they can give you expert advice. So they can help you, they can log in, they can tell you what's wrong. Or if you're just completely out of your depth, they can do all the bookkeeping for you at a really competitive price. So that's it, 10 minutes to give you 80% of your QuickBooks knowledge. Please have a go at yourself and doing some of the things I've just gone through on screen. You can always pause it, you can look in a little bit more detail. And remember, each section I went through, I've already done some videos about that to show it in far more detail. So if you are struggling in a particular place, jump into one of those other videos, have a look and see if you can find out some more information about it. And if you do have further questions, why not join us every two weeks where we do QuickBooks Labs here on the channel. QuickBooks Labs is a nice little way where you can join in live and you can ask questions to us about what, what's involved. Also, if you look on Facebook, QuickBooks Labs, you'll be able to see us there as well. Now, this video itself was inspired by David Manning. So if you haven't before, I'll leave a link below, but do have a look at his videos. His latest video was all about, don't be afraid to look at trying to quote unquote, steal other people's ideas. And that's exactly what I've done here. He had a video about learning 80% of what you need for photography in 10 minutes. Hence why I've done this video. And this t-shirt here is from his merch range. So have a look, have a go over to the channel, maybe grab yourself a nice t-shirt while you're at it. And that's it. Any questions, any issues, any problems, I've also got the comments below. Look at the Boffix website if you do need more uh, advanced knowledge as well. They're always there to help out and they can reach out to me. Don't forget to like, subscribe, maybe even press that notification bell. I'm gonna make sure I keep giving as much knowledge as I can out here on the interwebs as much as possible using YouTube. And we're also launching a brand new training session as well. So if you really are stuck on QuickBooks and you want to look at QuickBooks in a lot more detail, then I'll be releasing some details really soon about how you can get involved in a nice little training webinar so you can understand exactly what it is about QuickBooks for your business. And that's it. My name is Aaron Patrick. I've given you 10 minutes of my time to, to teach you 80% of QuickBooks to get you most of the way there. Keep using it, keep going, growing with it, and you never know, this time next year, you could be an absolute expert on QuickBooks as well. Thank you for your time, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Even if we're staying back, I'm hard to see you.